Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today Ed and I are going over the certification checklists for LEED and for Earthcraft. Each one of these has a tab. Oh, wow, okay. And you see 0, 15, you know, those are the things we got to look at. Right. So we've already started looking at all the points and stuff on this. So we want to make sure we understand how the point system is broken down so that we can target some of those things throughout the building process. That's important because some of those points come through things like not disturbing the site, which we're leaving a good portion of the site undisturbed, certainly under the tree protection zone. And the tree protection zone itself has certification point value as well. Your hot water, you're doing the home runs. The hot water heater you pick is, I'm sure you're gonna pick one that, that's gonna be within the efficiency side of it. Many of the opportunities we have to be green come by way of more efficient systems, like water heating, air conditioning, and water use efficiency, like a low flow or dual flush toilet. There will also be opportunities in the building materials, using less wood, sealing and insulating the house well, using high efficiency windows and doors. These choices earn points in the two programs in which we are seeking certification, Earthcraft and Lead for Homes. Some of these are required for gold, like advanced framing is required for gold mm -hmm. and optional for just certified. So we're doing that. I mean, I'd love to get gold if we can from a point standpoint. If we can get platinum, that would be great. Well, but. we've got the two stud corners. We've got the ladder tees, um, the pre-cut. Most of the lumber came pre-cut. Both programs have a baseline certification level, and both have required elements like air leakage minimums and optional ones, like rainwater harvesting, to gain higher levels of certification. We'll choose the optional ones carefully to fit our budget. So more expensive things like solar will only be an option if I can find a sponsor. On the, the Earthcraft one, you can see all the points here. Four joy centers are 24s, you know, so you get points for all that. Wall spacing, we are a 24 inch anywhere that it's not load bearing um, where even because we did two by six we get extra points for that too right. your insulation is going to get a ton of points certification points can also be earned for location specific items like can you walk to a store or restaurant is public transit within half a mile do you have access to a greenway or park to walk play and bike the list goes on the main takeaway here is that if you want to build a greenhouse, work with a builder who knows the requirements and can guide you on what you can and should do, and also on what you shouldn't do if you want to stay on budget. With regard to our project, here's a little bit of information you might find interesting. Because our location is in a small historic downtown, our house will earn the baseline Earthcraft certification on location points alone. Of course, we want to go higher. Knowing the certification checklists and choosing wisely, that's one thing that makes a greenhouse green. Thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for new videos weekly. The Green Shorts Greenhouse, uncovering what makes a greenhouse green.